Welcome to our service for the fifth Sunday after Trinity from the Parish of Central Swansea. Wherever you're watching from, it's really good to have you with us today. Last week we were privileged to have somebody as far away as Ecuador watching. Not sure if there's anyone from further away. Please let us know if there is. This week lockdown has continued to ease a little bit and we've been able to open one of the churches for private prayer at least. And at some point in the not too distant future, hopefully, we will be able to gather together again for worship. As we begin our worship today, though, we begin with the prayer for today. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Here begins the eighth chapter of the Epistle to the Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But since you are not in the flesh, you are, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Listen to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who has ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for that that. that as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. 
yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another, sixty, and in another, thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I have to admit it, but I've always quite enjoyed watching adverts on the TV. I can remember catchphrases like, have a break, have a Kit Kat, or a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play, or opal fruits made to make you have water. Something you often see on adverts is a statement like, this is life changing. I saw one recently for a hairbrush explaining that I too could look like a Hollywood star if I use this brush. I would never have to pay $500 to have my hair done again. Now I can assure you that I've never paid that much. But maybe with this brush, I would feel that great about my hair. I would be able to have my life changed. I would be new. Hollywood, here I come. Except that's not really me. It did get me to thinking though about the times when people tried to tell us about all that can make our life better, the best ways to change our life. In the reading that we heard from Romans, we heard Paul who wrote the letter, remind the believers how their life had been changed by Jesus. These believers had decided to follow Jesus and Paul's explaining that they now lived in a different way. They now lived by the Spirit, and so they were different. By turning to Jesus, they were changed. They had a new life. This life meant that they didn't live by their own ideas and by what they thought was best, because they now lived by the Spirit. That is, they lived strengthened by the Holy Spirit, who enabled them, as he enables us to live differently, to live more like Jesus. I remember talking to someone whose little boy, who is four, kept asking strange and rather deep questions as they walked to school. He would ask, Mum, are you happy? She would say, yes, she was happy. Then he would say, do you like living with us? Meaning, their family. Then he would ask, do you like your life? The mum kept asking me why he's asking these questions and he wouldn't really answer. Then one day he said, do you want a new life? Because there is a building there where you can get one. The building was a church that was moving into a new property and they had signs up saying, new life here. So the little boy wanted to check his mum was happy or she needed to go and get herself a new life. <laughs> it was an interesting thought, but actually we are all living the life we have. We may feel like we would like things to be better. We may wish we were able to do more. We may be desperate for things to go back to how they were before lockdown. We may be a bit nervous to go back to how things were or to do something which seems scary. The point is we are all able to live a new life as we turn to Jesus, as we follow him. We may already be believers, you may not. But if you aren't and would like to know more, please contact one of us. Our contact details are given as part of this service. We all, as we follow Jesus, have a chance for a new life. 
a life strengthened by the Holy Spirit. A life where we are truly changed. Now you may be thinking, that's all well and good for you to say, but life can be really hard. We can't be perfect all the time. Or other people are better at following Jesus than me. It's not true. Everybody struggles. Everyone wants to be better from time to time. The point is though, that Jesus doesn't call us to be perfect. He calls us to follow him. And as we follow, we are changed. We can keep turning to God and ask him to help us be more like him. We can ask that we will be strengthened daily by the Holy Spirit, so we can enjoy the life of living with our eyes fixed on Jesus. In the reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, we heard the parable of the sower. I really like this parable. In the parable, the sower sows seed, and some falls on good ground and grows. Some falls on seemingly good ground, but then gets choked by thorns. Some is snatched away by birds, and some starts to grow. But because it was sown in rocky ground, its roots weren't deep enough, and so it got burned by the sun. This is all about how we react when we hear about God and his love for us. We can ignore him. We can turn to God. But when things get tough, turn away. Or we can turn to God and then let others turn us away from him. Or we can turn to God and look to grow more like him. This is why Paul reminded the people in Rome that their lives had been changed and they needed to live by the Spirit. When our lives are changed and we live by the Spirit, then we grow to be more and more like Jesus. We get to draw closer to God. Our lives are changed as we spend more time praying reading the Bible. We are changed. Another really important bit about the parable of the sower is that the sower scatters seeds, not really checking where the seed is falling. Seems a bit careless really, but what Jesus was showing was that his love is so great it spreads everywhere. God doesn't discriminate. We all have a chance to turn to him to live more like him. This does mean as well that not only do we need to be strengthened by the Spirit, but we need to pray for others that they will come to enjoy the life that God gives. May we enjoy living by the Spirit, trusting God, depending on him, knowing how much he loves us. And may we seek to bring others to know about the love of God the Father who created us, the Son who died for us, and the Spirit who strengthens us. Amen.
And so we turn to prayer. Let us pray. The response in our prayers, when I say God of grace and love, we respond, hear our prayer. God of grace and love, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the new life that you offer to each one of us. We pray that you'll help us to live that new life, trusting in you day by day, seeking your guidance and seeking your strength always. We pray for your church, both in Swansea and throughout the world, that we may reflect your glory and reflect your love to others. We pray for John, the Archbishop. We pray for all who serve in your church in any way. We pray for the growth of your church, both spiritually and numerically. God of grace and love, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in a troubled world. Peace between nations and peace in the hearts of people, wherever they may be. Continue to think of those areas most troubled at this time. Pray for peace throughout the Holy Land, peace in the Middle East, an end to conflict wherever it occurs, an end to poverty and to injustice. We pray for peace in our own country, for wisdom amongst those who are chosen to rule. We pray for those who are helping people who are struggling in society at this time for a blessing upon their work. God of grace and love, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for family and for friends. We give thanks that some have been able to meet up together again in more recent days, perhaps after long periods of separation. We give thanks for the love and support of those that sustain us day by day. We pray for a renewal of that family life, for a recognition that love is what really matters in the world today. We pray for a building up of fellowship together in our churches as we're allowed to gather again in the future. God of grace and love, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling in whatever way at this time. Those who are sick, those who are mourning the loss of a loved one or worrying about a loved one who is sick. Those who are lonely, those who are depressed, those who are addicted those struggling to know what the future brings with regard to jobs or homes. We pray that you will fill them with your peace, that you'll bring them comfort where it is needed and blessing. God of grace and love, hear our prayer. And Lord, we remember those who have died in the peace and the faith of Christ. We pray especially for those we have known and love, but who we no longer see day by day. We pray that at the right time, you will grant us with them a share in your everlasting kingdom. God of grace and glory, hear our prayer. And we sum up these and all our prayers as we join together as Jesus has taught us in saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>